Hello and welcome again to my physical science lab video series. In today's video, I wanted to be, uh, briefly walk through the second lab for the physical science online class, which is the kinematics lab. This lab mostly deals with acceleration, um, specifically the acceleration of a ball rolling down a ramp. So I have actually set up the ramp on this table beside me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move the webcam so that we can see this uh, set up a little better. Uh, okay, so what we have is a ramp. That's this guy. The ramp is numbered. Um, so that we can measure out how far the ball has rolled in any length of time. These numbers are actually in centimeters. Uh, you will want to have a ramp which is a little bit longer than the one that I'm using. This one only is about uh, 120 centimeters long uh, from top to bottom and only measures to about 110. You will want at least two meters worth of ramp to do this. I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera at the top of the ramp for a sort of experimental view for now. Um, second piece of equipment is the ball. So the basic experiment involves the ball rolling down the ramp and then you time how much time it takes to get all the way down the ramp. Um, you will want a stopwatch or a stopwatch app, um, which is fine on your phone. Basically, this thing lets me take uh, intermediate times, which means that I can hit the timer at each increment as it rolls down the ramp. You're supposed to time a quarter of a meter increments as best you can, although as you get towards the bottom, the ball may be moving fast enough that you have to go to a larger increment size. Um, the last piece of equipment besides the ball, the ramp, and the stopwatch is a protractor. Um, this guy can be used to measure the angle of the ramp, and in fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, what you do is you line up the protractor at the bottom of the ramp. Um, you want, there is a little crosshair and a little hole. You want the bottom of the ramp to be lined up through this crosshair and in fact you kind of want it to slash through this little hole. So that is when the ramp is roughly right here. Um, then you measure where does the ramp intersect the uh, angles out here on the edge of this protractor? So you're not going to be able to see the fine detail on this web camera to see that. There are, in fact, um, little increments. Uh, in this case, it's degree increments along the edge of the uh, protractor. This ramp actually hit the two degree increment, so I would mark this as a two degree angle. Um, so let's go ahead and put the camera back here at the top of the ramp again. And we're ready to try this experiment out. Um, what you do is you place the ball at the very top of the ramp. And when you're ready to release, you release it. You start the stopwatch and you lap it after every quarter of a meter as best you can. So three, two, one, go. Lap, 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 lap. So according to this stopwatch, um, you can actually read off, don't, you can ignore the top number, that's just when I got around to stopping it. It's these other numbers below it that actually matter. Those are where I hit the lap on the stopwatch. Um, this lab may work out better for you if you have a lab partner, one person who's in charge just of timing and one person who's in charge just of dropping the ball. 
or letting the, the ball go and, and saying go. Um, in previous iterations, it's even easier if you have somebody standing at each quarter or half meter increment, all of whom start the stopwatch when the ball is released and stop them when it gets to them. But um, unless you happen to have a lot of friends who want to help you out on this lab, I'd say that the lapping the stopwatch as I've done here is the best option. Um, so you can kind of sort of read the times uh, at the, in these laps. Um, 1.32, 1.915, 2.353, etc. So those are as best I could get on this first run. The times of the ball as it rolls down the ramp at each of these increments. So you'd write those out in your um, your data table. If you look at the actual instructions, a sample of the data table has been created for a 10 degree ramp angle. Um, and you'll notice that there's several columns along here. Um, these columns are because you're going to want to do multiple trials at this same angle and then take an average. So that all of these times that I just took would be equivalent to filling up trial number one. So this whole first column of times. Um, now I would repeat it for time number two. So place at the top of the ramp. Three, two, one, and go. Okay, and so once again, these are the times that I took. Really, the top four times are the ones that are important. This fifth one is irrelevant. It's basically when I got around to hitting the stop button, which is elsewhere on my stopwatch. So you record these times, and you repeat this uh, until you've done your five trials. And once you've got those five trials, you can get to making a graph. Um, the graph actually is going to be distance versus time. And um, you can also attempt to make a speed versus time graph. Um, one of these two is ultimately going to give you a straight line. The other one is going to give you a curve. There's a procedure in here for figuring out what um, uh, what kind of curve you have, whether you've got a parabola or not. Um, the basic idea behind the procedure is that if you have something like um, y versus x and you get a parabola like so, that if you square an appropriate axis, it will turn your parabola into a straight line. From there, you can find the slope of the line. So you pick two points that are on the line, and your slope becomes uh, this point is x, call it x1 squared comma y. This point is x2 squared comma y. So your slope is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 squared minus x1 squared. Okay, so you just find the slope as such. Um, you can then compare that slope to the acceleration, specifically slope should be one half of acceleration. If you're doing time here and distance traveled here, slope is one half acceleration. And the last thing that you're supposed to do is compare the um, 
experimental value that you obtain this way to the theoretical value for what the acceleration should be going down this ramp. So let me go ahead and erase this so I can write out what that comparison looks like. Your comparison is going to be via an ex a uh, percent error. So to do that, you take your experimental value, you subtract your theoretical value, you divide by your experimental value, and you multiply by 100%. So, for example, if you get an experiment of, uh, let's say, 100 and a theory of 95, then your percent error is going to be 100 minus 95 divided by 100 times 100 percent. So this is 5 hundredths times 100 percent means you have a 5 percent error. So that is the um, experiment in a nutshell. The theoretical value that you get uh, for this experiment is that you use that the acceleration should be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of theta where theta is the angle that you measured between the ramp and the table, um, or the ramp and whatever is supporting the ramp. It's the angle that the ramp is above the horizontal. So in this case, theta was 2 degrees, because we measured a 2 degree angle. And I think that that just about does it for um, this experiment. So you should be making uh, this graph of distance versus time um, and then squaring one axis so either distance versus time squared or time versus distance squared one of those two should give you a straight line um, the recommended angles for this experiment are one degree two degrees and four degrees uh, if you get a nice fancy protractor you can do smaller increments like half a degree one degree two degrees uh, if it turns out that the ball is just moving too fast, especially at the 4 degree angle, then that's not a bad way to go. Um, try, try doing it at a half degree angle. Um, and that covers everything that I wanted to talk about for this experiment. So hopefully this uh, little video uh, demo is helpful to you all when you do this experiment. And um, thanks for watching, and good luck.